Hey guys, I am so excited to come back and talk to you guys. I have really truly been enjoying reading comments, things of that nature. Well, most importantly, I want to y'all to remember that I am here for individuals who have herpes. I'm not here for nothing else. I'm here for people who truly, truly need the help. And if you know somebody who have herpes or know somebody who's been living with it for a long period of time and you know that I just me just sharing what I'm sharing can benefit them, please share it. Everything else I can care less about. But at the end of the day, I just want to let you guys know, you know, I am here for, for the guys, ladies and men who have herpes. And that's it. Other than that, I just want to come to you guys and talk about sex after herpes. And I know this is one that we all want to talk about. Many may think, like, how can you have sex after this? You shouldn't be having sex because you have an STD. You, sh you shouldn't be doing anything. You need to save yourself. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to really share my opinion about all of that, okay? So number one, you can have a sex life after me, I mean after herpes. A lot of you guys are scared about that because you, your biggest fear is transmitted over to somebody or somebody agreeing to being with you and then you still transmit it over to them. They get mad at you, they leave you, try to hit you, kill you, all these other things. So I want to explain to you guys how you can have now after safe sex, which y'all know I don't really like saying that, but can have sex um, and try to protect your mate after. Okay, so number one, we all hear this from our doctors, is that, you know, do not have sex when you have an outbreak. Like, and you hear from your doctors, well, what about the, the shedding and what about this and what about that? Number one, yes, you do shed. Typically, we shed in our first year the most and after that we don't really after that we do but not as much okay so another thing is when they say if you do not have an outbreak you're fine they're correct they're not lying to you okay they're not lying at all but a lot of you believe um, an outbreak is just blisters cuts bruises um, lesions however your outbreak comes you believe if I don't see that then I'm good no not true when we mean symptoms, we're not talking about one symptom. We're talking about the uh, swollen lymph nodes. We're talking about the fever like, um, if you have still get that, you know, feeling like you're having a fever. I'm talking about the itching, the burning, the discharge. I'm talking about the achy legs. I'm talking about all of it. I'm not talking about one symptom. And a lot of you guys are, and including me, I had, I have done it too, that we think one symptom is just blisters. No. And that's why a lot of people have herpes and they don't realize it because we're all looking for some blisters, some cuts, some something. And honestly, we, we're neglecting the symptoms, the warning signs. And a lot of us ignore warning signs. And that's how we got it for so many people or people are getting from people or we contracted whoever we contracted for because that person had symptoms and they was not paying any attention. They didn't think it was that big of a deal. It may not have been as bad. Everybody's outbreaks is not the worst of the worst putting them in a hospital. It's not that. Some people's stuff is so mild that it's like, it's no big deal. Or they have like, you know, a little itching for a day and it's over. You got some people who have an ache in here for a day and it's over. You know, type thing on two, three days. It's not lasting long and it's not bothering them for them to be aware of the fact that they're having an outbreak. So that, with that being said, that's why 90% of people are contracting herpes from people who don't know. And it's not that they don't know because they haven't been tested. Typically, they haven't because nobody knows they're being tested, um, not being tested for herpes because they're not acting for them. But no, number one, they're not going to get tested for herpes because, they, number one, they don't believe they have it because they don't think they're outbreaks. They don't think they're having an outbreak. So with that being said, you have to understand when they say you... Don't have sex if you're not having sex or if if you're sorry guys if you don't have an outbreak then you, the chance of you passing on to anybody is really slow then or not chance you can't pass it on to somebody is because they're meaning all symptoms outbreak means with a lesion or without with one and without one you're not gonna always have a blister or a cut or whatever you may have you're not gonna always have that sometimes you may just have swollen lymph nodes. some days you may just have itching and, and burning some days you may just have burning some days you may just have a discharge alone you know you don't know how this is going to affect your body so my whole thing don't ignore nothing that's going on in your parts okay just don't ignore anything at all if something's going on stop hope all sexual activity period just halt and figure out what's going on with yourself and that I think that's just the main reason why a lot of people are struggling um, with 
uh, I can't, how can I have sex after this? It's because you don't understand that symptoms are symptoms. Okay, symptoms are symptoms. So if you're not having any symptoms, you can't pass nobody on anything on to anybody because you don't have anything going on. So I just wanted to stress that to you guys because I know so many of you guys are worrying that even with somebody, if you're in a relationship with them, they're fine with it and they're asking you, how can we protect ourselves? What can we do? What can we not do? You can kind of do whatever you're going to do. You're going to have sex the way you're going to have sex. But to help them from getting it is the fact that you pay attention to your body and you do what you need to do. So number one, your your role in this, your 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 responsibilities is number one, tell that person that you have herpes. And, and, and if they accept it, they accept it. If they don't, they don't. We really don't care what they decide to do. My whole thing is your responsibility on your side of making sure you tell that person because you know how you felt when they did not tell you. Now, if you're a person who knew that person had herpes, well, you knew the risk was there and this is where they messed up at. You know, this is where the fault came in, if you want to say, or the misunderstanding or whatever may case may be in because they didn't understand that, you know, symptoms are outside of just a blister. Okay. So with that being said, you have to make sure you tell that person that you have it. Number two after that is making sure you are aware of your body. Know your body. Know when you're having an outbreak. Know all the symptoms that you have. You need to know yourself inside out because the way for you to protect that person is for you knowing yourself. And that's even if you don't have an STD right now. The way for you to or don't have an SC if somebody's watching who don't have one. The only way to protect ourselves or even us to protect ourselves from something else is being aware of our bodies. You must be aware. And a lot of us have no clue what our parts even look like because we don't look. We don't know what normal is because we probably never had normal. You just never know. Um, I don't know your situation. So with that being said, a lot of us just don't know our bodies. And as we know, as teens and all that stuff, people be like, don't do that and don't touch that. And you shouldn't be doing that. My whole thing, learn yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's all you have is you. So you might as well learn you. Um... So the moment, number one, second thing is to know your body, know your outbreaks, know what they look like, know what they feel like. If you're a person who never had an outbreak, you're having outbreaks and you have no clue at all. So with that being said, since I said it doesn't have anything to do with them crazy pictures that they have on Google, I need you to look at the small things on your body. I, and it may not be a blister. You may not be getting that at all. You may just be having symptoms all the time. Pay attention. It's not a time you say you're not having an outbreak. Not saying some people don't. I believe some people just have one outbreak and they never have another again. But I do believe a lot of people are having outbreaks and they have no earthly idea because they don't know what they're looking for. They're looking for Google. Stop looking for Google. Google is not everybody's body. I, I tell y'all, Google is not y'all friend. It's not your friend when it comes to us. Everything else, I tell you, go to Google for. But when it comes to herpes, Google is not your friend because all the information, majority of the information is outdated and just contradictory, blah, blah. It's going against itself so many times. One person say this, another say this, another say that, you another say that. You know, it gets to a point, it's like, what do you really mean? So we make up in our heads what it means and things like that. So I truly tell you, you know, the best thing to do is to learn you. Just learn you. Take your time and learn your body because what I say happens to me may not ever happen to you. And you talk to this person, that person, that person is all different. I can tell you we can get a bunch of people in the room and everybody going to tell you their outbreaks are different. Everybody going to tell you certain things are totally different. So with that being said, I want you to learn you and stop worrying about everybody else and worry about what's going to happen to you. Yes, they give us a long list of the symptoms, but they're letting you know from a array of people that they learned that this, these symptoms came from, that you may not have them all, but best believe you're going to have one or two or three of them and you need to learn them and you need to know them well, okay? And then the last, um, third thing is to determine how are you going to keep your outbreaks down? How are you going to reduce them? Y'all y'all know me. I tell y'all, I do not take anything. I go to natural route. I just did not want to take medicine all my life. I felt like it was like, a, it's just like reminding me every day. And I don't want to think about herpes every day. I just don't feel like it's necessary. So with that being said, I didn't want to take it because it reminds you like you're dying or you got a sickness or something. I just didn't want to feel it. So with that being said, I just like, you know what? I don't want to take that. And I hated pills at that time. I couldn't barely swallow a little baby pill. So I was like, uh, I can't do it. So I decided to go the natural route. So when I, I mean a natural route, I mean um, you're doing olive oil, oregano oil. You can do tea tree oil and coconut oil together. Put a little bit down there. It's going the tea tree oil is going to dry it out, and the coconut oil is going to reduce the itching and the burning. Um, you can do warm baths. Um, drink different type of teas. It's just so much. 
you can do, but those are the main things you can do to apply, um, which is the oils, um, the essential oils. And then for your immune system, you can do zinc, um, lysine. You can also do, um, blah, 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 blah. uh, vitamin C. I'm trying to think of everything at the type of, uh, in the moment, um, that you could take. And then as the next thing, you can take your Valtrex if you do. On the other side, you can take the bowel tracks, okay, if you decide. So that's your natural route versus your medicine, okay? You choose. I'm not ever going to tell you what to do. If any of y'all talk to me on the phone, y'all know me. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You do what you feel like is best for your adult. You can make your own decisions. My whole thing, if you don't want to do it that route, y'all know what to do. If you do want to take it that route, you know what you want to do. Um, but for me, I'll say I do the tea tree oil, the oil, uh, coconut oil, and then I do for my immune system is greens. A lot of you always ask me what the heck are the greens. Um, I did not bring them in front of me. But um, as y'all know, I'm an It Works distributor and when I joined It Works, I learned about the greens, all right? And then the greens is eight servings of fruits and vegetables. You have 38 superfoods. Like, I absolutely love it. It gives me dumb energy, which I know y'all need because y'all not sleeping. Y'all stressed out now. All, all so many other things. Um, and uh, on top of that, we're working and all this other stuff. So, with that being said, you got to understand you have to take something for that immune system. I'm not saying your immune system is going to be tip-top shape. Nobody's that. We're, getting, we're in contact with stuff all the time. But you must take something or do something. So I take that on top of trying to keep my um, eating habits up. So, you know, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, most importantly, green vegetables, um, drinking a lot of water, trying to work out since it's neat. I ain't been working out as much, but trying to get back into the habit of working out. So if that's what I don't, my whole thing, I don't care if you just walk. I don't care if you just get a big water bottle and drink it. I don't care if you just take just one pill a day. I don't care. Just do something to get that immune system up. And as we know, it is getting cold outside. Some people are up north, some are down south. I'm in the south. I'm in Atlanta. It is not cold here, but I know up north and New York, it is freezing. Okay? So with that being said, make sure you're doing what you need to do, especially for your weather, but most importantly for you because you know you got to keep that immune system best as possible. And, number, and another thing, make sure you're getting sleep. Okay? I know that's hard, but you must get some sleep. Okay? Next thing. Um, and the last thing is talking to your mate. It's time to talk. I think sex is a problem because nobody communicates. That's the biggest thing. And if y'all want to say, it's because you have to wait into marriage. Look, let me tell y'all something. I'm a Christian. Okay? I am a Christian. But I also have to be real with myself. I had sex outside of marriage. So a lot of people want to say, since you had sex outside of marriage, it's your punishment. You sin. You did this. You did that. My whole thing is I read the Bible just like everybody else. And since I read the Bible like everybody else, I know Jesus died on the cross for my sins. So with that being said, I went and I did my part, which the Bible states. I did my part. I confessed and I'm moving forward. Not saying I didn't slip up and went back and did a couple of more times. Not saying that. But at the end of the day, I am still being blessed. And that's my, my downfall is the reason why I'm here for many of you guys now. Because you didn't have too many anybody, especially African-American women, doing this. So me falling was a benefit for millions. So with that being said, I just want to put that out there. I am a Christian. And a lot of people may think, like, how are you a Christian? But you're telling people how to say, my whole thing, I'm, re I'm talking to the people who need to hear it. You know, we're going to be real. I'm talking to people who understand where I'm coming from because I did not have that. Growing up as a kid, I did not have that. I didn't have anybody telling me waiting to marriage. I knew I should have because I was in and out the church. But it's very hard to do something when you have no model at all. I'm being honest. It's so hard. And anybody can attest to this who are who've been struggling in it and still struggling. It's very, very hard when you do not have somebody in the woodworks with you. I did... Um, for a short period of time, for about like a year or two, I was celibate. And guys, it was the hardest thing in the whole world. It was so hard. But the only reason why I made it easier, I stayed out of people's houses. I had crazy boundaries. Um, I didn't go and hang with guys. I didn't, at night, I ain't went on the phone. I wasn't doing stuff. I learned myself in and out, and I stayed within my sisters. I was with my homegirls all the time. We was reading the Bible. We was praising. We were doing other things to keep my mind set. And I'm telling you, I strongly suggest it. I'm not going to lie. If you are after having herpes, go for it. I will tell you to wait in the marriage. Because honestly, ladies, I'm going to be real with you. You are single until you're married. You're single. Nobody has no right to be committed to you. And I know we're not hearing this at all. 
we're, we're here and just don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But do y'all truly understand why he say don't do it? And many don't. We get beat over the head with a Bible. And I tell you, you can throw Bibles at me all day. It's not going to make a difference for me because I know my relationship with God and I know he loves me and I'm blessed in what I do. And I know I made mistakes and I'm not perfect and I ain't trying to be. So my sin is my sin and don't worry about my sin. So with that being said, you just have to understand um, the main reason God says that is because of the lack of communication that comes after sex for so many people. When you're not married, which I am married now, sex is to keep you together. This point of sex is intimacy. It keeps you together. It keeps you glued. And when you're glued to somebody who's not your husband and not committed to you, it makes it so hard to pull apart, okay? And at that, within sex and marriage, it, it creates the closeness, the communication, the, the everything. It creates so much for you. But when you're with a person who is not your husband and you're having sex with them, you create that. But what you're missing is the fact that you're not getting the communication that you would get out of your marriage. You're not going to get that with somebody who's not yours who's not committed to you. You're not going to get that. And have y'all noticed when you have sex with somebody, it seems like communication gets all over the place. Y'all don't, y'all not as close as y'all used to be. Just so much stuff is going on. And that's because y'all don't have a covenant or a commit full commitment to each other. He's not committed to you and you not committed to him. So sex is to bring you closer together and glue you and tie you up tight. But we're getting tight clothes with so many people. And I know, guys, I've been there. I've been there. You wonder why, you know, you wouldn't be with him, but you could feel him. And you can, you know, you craved him. And you wanted to be with him all the time. I wanted to be with her all the time. It's because of that. It, it glued you tight. You, I can feel when my husband going to call me. I can feel my husband don't feel good. I can feel when my husband um, is angry. I can feel it all because we are like this. We're glued tight. You know, we're glued tight. And that's why God truly do not want us having sex before marriage. That's the main reason, guys. It's create the communication. It creates the togetherness, the loving, the be there for us type thing. Be here for us. But you're doing that. We're doing that. And we have, and I have, and my husband has too, done it. And it has caused so much havoc in our lives. So you want, you know, you hear it from other people who, you know, you're, holier than thou friends sometimes and then you have your friends who truly do love you um and i had those as well who said you know at least you got to do the right thing and i knew guys i'm not gonna act like i didn't i knew i need to be having sex um shouldn't be having sex before marriage but i learned why finally some i finally learned but i had to learn from experience i didn't learn from somebody standing in a pew i'm being honest i did not learn that from a pew i learned it from my own life experiences and a lot of us are not going to listen to people anyway we're going to do what we want to do and you know what god does he's going to teach you anyway <laughs> So with that being said, you can talk to anybody who um, is out here. Most people do not want to be having sex right now, but we just truly don't understand. We truly don't understand. Um, so I just say next time, you just know. Um, you know why now. I just want to bring that up because so many people want to talk about that as well. You should have been doing it. If you weren't doing it, you didn't do that. My whole thing is I know I have so many women I talk to who are getting herpes in their marriages or getting herpes, did not know they had herpes and now it's popping up in their marriages. So my whole thing is STD is going to pop up wherever you are. Waiting in marriage, waiting after marriage, it can pop up. Even if you save yourself, just say from now on, you know, you save yourself and you get married to somebody. Y'all do everything. Nothing shows up, whatever. Later on, boom, something can, comes up. That's the thing that can happen. And a lot of people want to pull the, you're nasty, you've been with a lot of people, it's your fault type thing, da 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 Yeah, but at the end of the day, we have to understand, these viruses are some tricky suckers sometimes, you know? So you think you did your part if you're still getting tested, you're doing all your part, and then all of a sudden, it comes out of nowhere. It's going to punch you in your face. And a lot of people are getting blindsided. And once again, going to back to what I was talking to, about earlier, people don't understand the symptoms to things. We only think about one or two symptoms. We're not thinking about all the symptoms. And a lot of us don't know. Or we're not aware of it because people stress it and stress that. And we have to understand. And we are, I, I hear the, oh, you got to educate yourself. But when you're educating yourself and you hear noise, you got people in your ear talking and talking and talking. We, we as human beings, listen to words going in, out of voice, out your mouth. Those stick. 
So if you're going to educate yourself, I prefer you to open your mouth and read out loud. It's very vital. As we talked about once before, affirmations are vital because you speak it and your mind has to register it. But if you're reading, not saying that you're not comprehending, but if you're hearing other things in your mind and everybody else talking and TV talking and your mama talking, homegirl talking, everybody talking, you're taking in what they say more than what you just read three, four days ago, or whatever. That stuff is going to ring more on top of that that you value somebody else's opinion more than you value your own. I don't know why we do that, but we do. At the end of the day, a lot of us are living out what other people told us. Even though we did our research, I'm not knocking nobody. We all have done our research to a certain extent. But we value what other people open their mouths and tell you something. So at the end of the day, I'm going to leave that right there. We got to realize we value other people so much that we miss some things. And people, and we have to understand people comprehend differently than we do. So they only tell you what's important to them and not telling you the full thing that they need to tell you. So it's a lesson learned. But I just want to tell y'all, I kind of know I was a little bit all over the place, but those thoughts been in my head all week long. So I was like, I had to get them out. So, and I didn't want to create another video. Today. So I know this video is long. But with that being said, I just want to let you guys know that, you know, that is sex after herpes. You simply tell the person. You learn your body. You determine um, what route you're going to do to per reduce your outbreaks or cure, you know, deal with your, I won't, no, no cure guys. But to help you speed up your um, outbreaks and then simply um, learning how to reduce them. And then also on top of that, talking to the person that you have and says, communication must be there. If the communication is not there, it's a problem. If you cannot talk to this person about sex, if you can't ask them their sexual history, anything like that, you don't need to be doing anything with them anyway. That has been something I have done in the past. And I think all humans do it every once in a while. Um, some people are good at it. Some people are on it, on it, on it. And typically, I learn that people who are on it like that obsess about everything. They just that type of person. They are germaphobes. They they just they, that's the type of people they are. Okay. And then you got your people who are kind of carefree. It's like oh, you know. And you got your people who are super trusting, which is most women. We're dumb trusting majority of the time. Um, and we don't ask questions. We don't ask questions. So I fault all of us sometimes that we do not ask the proper questions. And the proper questions are, when the last time you've been tested? When the last time you've been tested? When the last time you've been sexual active? Like, because if you've been tested six months ago and you were just sexual active a week ago, that test ain't, it ain't even valid no more. That test don't matter. It's time to get him tested again within the next two or three weeks. That means don't do nothing, no kissing, no nothing with him at all until you get that test, okay? Speaking from experience, guys, I'm not perfect. I have a mother freaking sex life, okay? I, I got one. I'm grown. It is what it is. I know who I am, and I'm not really faced. It made me who I am today. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to really understand if he got tested so long ago that's not valid what's valid is what's to that at current time so i would say if he just told you i had sex last week or last month and he been tested three months or four months ahead of that it ain't valid no more go get him tested again including yourself you always get tested again i don't care if you got tested six months ago okay you're going back with him you might as well go and get tested again or you got tested three months ago you might as well go get tested again because i tell y'all stuff is popping up and you don't even know it's there we got some stuff like chlamydia which is a silent killer death and gonorrhea will be there and you don't even know it's there guys like i said not aware of the symptoms you're only seeing one or two things or you don't think them that they're not that serious so my whole thing is constantly if you got the opportunity to go get tested why not why not go okay number another thing make him make him show you sit down and y'all look at the numbers look at everything together because that word of mouth thing boy i tell you people will tell you anything to get what they want okay so i will truly tell you please make him show you please make him show even the people who have called people and told them they have herpes please say no take a picture of it and send it to me i don't want to hear that crap Take a picture of Simpson because some people knew they had it and they didn't tell you, okay? <laughs> okay? So, with that being said, make sure, you know, um, you see it yourself um, and talk about it. Like I said, go do it together. Don't just force him to go do it. No, y'all go together and y'all go do it together and y'all look at that stuff together. And if he have something, hey, that's something you, you two will have to hash out. But at least you know. It's better to know than not know. 
Okay, we kind of live in a la la land, like nothing's gonna happen to us. Um, and I ain't gonna lie, I lived in that world before, and it we can't live in that world, guys. We just can't, even though we have an STD, we just still can't be in la la land about not getting people tested. Um, and most importantly, using condoms. I have been at fault at that too, guys. I'm not gonna act like I'm perfect, like I always use protection. No, I have had my moments as well. So, with that being said, you know. Please use the protection. <laughs> Please still use the protection. If he don't want to use protection, I need you to go get a female comma and put him on. One of y'all needs something on. Um, and most importantly, please stop, you know, having oral sex. I'm about to say something else. Please stop having oral sex without protection. Because even if, even if, you know, you use the protection down there, but you're not using it on your mouth, you have already set yourself up. Please stop doing that, y'all. I'm at fault for it as well, okay? Um, I'm not talking to y'all like I don't understand. I'm talking to y'all from experience, okay? Not saying I had anything in my mouth or anything like that because I never really had any STDs um, at all, more than bacteria vaginosis um, until I had ST, uh, until I have um, herpes. So, you know, with that being said, um, I'll tell you, please use the protection, please. If you're not married to this person, please don't you don't trust that they're not messing with somebody. I'm not telling you to sit here and don't trust people, but at the end of the day, we know the world we live in. People are women, men are just throwing themselves at people. And some people are so like, I'll take whatever it gives me, or I'm so desperate, or you know, I I'm confident. <clears throat> I can get whatever I want and I take it, you know, at the end of the day, use your own wisdom to protect yourself. But also, as you talk to that person, make them be responsible for them too. <clears throat> be responsible for them too. So, I hope this helps y'all. I hope you grab what you need to grab. Like I said, I was all over the place, but I'm okay with it. Y'all know I be like all over the place sometimes. But, hey, it's just having a conversation with you. I'm not trying to do the... Oh, you guys, I'm really just trying to talk to you guys for y'all to understand and for you to get it. So I hope that helped you. Most importantly, remember that do not have any sexual interactions at all when you have an outbreak. That's with a blister and without a blister, guys. That's every symptom. If you have no symptoms, itching, scratch, itching, burning, swollen lymph nodes, aching, any of it, with a blister, add that, or without a blister, if you have any of that, no sex, no kissing at the time, if you have type 1, none, nothing at that time, nothing, 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 nothing. And when all that stuff go away, and I say go away, everything's gone, then you're in a clear. All right, so I love you guys. I hope that helps you guys so, so much because it's been on my heart heavy because so many people are, are worrying about their sex lives and things like that because some people are in relationships and some people are married, so they're really still weary about it so there you go i hope that helped you once again if you have not talked to me i would love to talk to you get a free session 45 minute session um if you have already talked to me and you want to continue to talk to me you need to get into the coaching y'all know i have the weekly bi-weekly um and monthly sessions um so my whole thing is even if you want to don't want to do the weekly or bi-weekly because you just like you know what i'm getting to a better place Let's do the monthly. You're going to reach out to me and we'll talk every month. The whole thing is just something about having somebody to talk to. So with that being said, I would love to be that person for you. Um, but if I've already had my session with you, you must start coaching with me. Um, so I love you guys dearly. Um, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Bye.